And now uh, we have come uh, to the panel discussion, and I want to invite um, my two colleagues, uh, David Dudy Marcus, uh, founder of uh, uh, Markutech, and Ohad Kleiman, a VP Sales uh, Europe and APAC at Broadman 17. I will stop sharing uh, the screen in order to allow you to see the beautiful faces of all the three of us. And uh, let's uh, move on to, uh, uh, to the panel. So, hi, Dudi. Hi, Ohad. How are you? Hey, hi. You are both muted, by the way. No, okay. no way, just a second. No, we shouldn't. Can you hear me? You should no, hear, I can right? Hear. I was uh, the guy who was guilty in shutting your mouth, so I was the guy who actually allowed you to speak. So first of all, welcome on board. Thank you very and much. Uh, Thank you. maybe we'll start uh, with each one of you telling me a little bit about himself and about his organization, company. Let's start with Ohad, please. Okay, hi. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. So my name is Ohad Kleiman, uh, as uh, is, uh, Israel uh, mentioned, I'm the VP Sales of uh, Europe and APAC for Broadman 17. Uh, Broadman 17 is a software company. We provide uh, efficient ADA solution. Um, in general, Broadman 17 has two line of businesses. The first one is working with uh, integrated uh, tier ones and OEM. The second one, which is more relevant for today's discussion, is for the uh, aftermarket working with the uh, fleet management. Uh, Broadman 17 has uh, uh, developed a uh, patent deep learning technology that is designed for automotive division, and it enables us to run on off-the-shelf, uh, low-power dash cams and uh, embedded hardware without or uh, still enabling the top accuracy, which is so important for these types of, uh, of solutions. Uh, in general, we are, our customers are Again, both the tier ones and OEMs, and also um, in the fleet management are the TSPs, video telematics. We provide a software solution that fits with uh, a, a solution and hardware solutions like what ISAT is uh, offering. Okay, Ohan, thank you, Dudi. Hey, okay, hey, everyone. Um, thanks, Israel, for uh, inviting me to this panel. Uh, my name again is uh, Dudi Malkus. I, uh, I have over 20 years of experience in the fields of commercial telematics, fleet management, smart mobility, and IoT, including in key executive positions with uh, TSPs and uh, hardware vendors. Um, until 2017, I was the chief technology and chief product uh, officer for Pointer, the location. Later on, until the end of 2019, I was the CEO of Micronet a vendor of iHand, the sophisticated Android-based platforms for fleet management services. Um, at the end of 2019, I opened Markutech, and I've been working as an independent consultant, helping technology vendors, TSPs, and startups to improve their performance, offering and market uh, success through uh, services like product strategy, product line uh, definition, projects management, ODMs management, uh, business development, and uh, bespoke market research. Um, the video telematics, I must say, is very close to my heart. I've been involved in this space through numerous projects and solutions since the beginning of 2018. Um, after identifying a video in general and mainly computer vision, AI-powered uh, video telematics, as the next killer application in the fleet management market evolution. Um, with that said, I hope to be able to share with you today some, some of my professional perceptions and, and the knowledge I've gathered over the past few years. Okay, guys, uh, let's dip in uh, into the subject matters. I already see on the chat channel, by the way, a few questions, and we will address those uh, during the panel, but let's uh, start with uh, uh, two main questions. The first one uh, uh, will be, what do you really think about the v value of uh, uh, video telematics uh, for vehicle fleets, TSPs, and device vendors? And I specifically trying to look at each one of them separately. I mean, whatever fleet needs is not necessarily whatever TSP needs or a device vendor. Uh, so I will appreciate your opinion on the matter. Uh, Dudi, maybe we'll start with you. Okay. 
Okay, look, it's it's a it's a broad uh, topic. I can I can speak about it like uh, two hours or, or so, but uh, let's let's try to make it short. So you you struggle, you mentioned uh, before in your presentation uh, that uh, driver destruction and drowsiness being responsible for twenty percent of uh, collision incidents. Uh, but uh, we all know that if uh, we look at the rate of accidents caused by all sorts of human error, then we get uh, over ninety percent. So the answer is quite clear. I mean, uh, improved safety and operation cost reduction are the key value for fleets. If we're talking first about fleets. Um, video telematics is natural evolution of uh, legacy driver behavior monitoring applications. And uh, if you can show to the fleet manager uh, the better return on investment of uh, video-based solutions uh, compared with legacy driver behavior monitoring applications, it becomes an easy sell. Um, video makes it easier for fleet manager to mitigate risk, um, to manage driver training programs, um, simply because the visual context of driver behavior events is in the reach of a, of, of a mouse click. Um, you know, ADAS features, uh, a lot thanks to Mobileye, are already recognized to, uh, to reduce accidents rate and are well adopted in the, after, in the automotive market. Uh, you gain insurance premium cost reduction, higher availability uh, time, availability of the vehicles, um, less injuries and fatalities, according to Frost and Sullivan, by the way, up to 45% less, uh, less fines, better compliance, and in many cases, insurance claims uh, exoneration. Um, the result worth lots of money uh, to the fleet manager. Um, DMS is also proven to enhance um, uh, dramatically driver safety um, with reduction potential of up to 80%, uh, lower drowsiness and destruction events, and 70% uh, increase in seatbelt use. Again, according to uh, Frost and Sullivan, I don't measure these numbers. Um, DMS still needs to cross uh, a significant barrier of driver's acceptance and privacy um, but it is definitely just behind the corner and uh, in most of the territories, thanks to the reasons I, uh, I shared uh, before. Um, do you want me to go on with the, uh, with the other? Uh, no. I mean, uh, with the other one hour and 55 minutes, yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I want, before address, uh, transferring the, uh, uh, the question to Ohad, I still have one question to challenge you, and that's on the commercial uh, level. If you are about to sell video telematics, whether it's DMS or whether it's ADAS, uh, to um, a, a fleet, okay, mm -hmm. what will be your approach uh, to actually convince the fleet that they need such, uh, such a piece? It's a matter. It's a matter of value for the fleet. Uh, at the end of the day, if I can uh, prove them a better return on investment uh, by uh, being able to reduce um, the cost, the operation cost, as I mentioned before, by being able to run a, a proof of concept pilot that will show him out of the box that that these systems really saves lots of money, makes his operation more streamlined, makes his operation safer. Uh, then at the end of the day, it uh, leaves, it keeps more money at his pocket at the end of the month. So it's a really, really easy sell. I think that uh, because this uh, technology is uh, much more mature these days, um, there is a wide acceptance to, uh, to adopt it. And uh, it is, uh, yeah, uh, still a lot of questions around uh, around video and being captured and the uh, privacy matter and GDPR and things like that. But um, I think those barriers are already crossed in North America and soon will be closed, will be uh, closed the uh, rest of the globe, of the world globally. Okay, uh, Ohad. Yeah, so I think that uh, when we are, um, when we're looking at the video telematics and I'll try maybe to and the, the, the device vendors, 
I think that that uh, video telematics, uh, as a per se, is, is you know the, the the ability to record is kind of uh, stating the obvious why the advantage around it. I'll take the angle of adding uh, the AI capabilities, and especially of course in front of uh, or regarding the front facing camera, but also for the in cabin. So I think that the the, the advantages that this uh, uh, that this enables is is like divided into three parts, right? It's the the part of the accident prevention, right? So being able to alert in real time, the ability to run um, uh, on the video telematics to have the edge uh, edge based vision AI enables the real time notification and actually helps to save, right, and to to, to prevent accidents. Um, this real time notification has a, a, a second part, which is driver coaching, right? So we have driver coaching uh, in retrospective and we have driver coaching as part of the ongoing driver, right? The driver is, is, is on the car six, eight hours a day and each time that he will, I don't know, do a tailgating or uh, be too close or talk on the phone or something like that, uh, uh, that he will get the alert in the car will hopefully, uh, and from uh, experiments we've seen, it's, it's reducing the, the, uh, uh, these, these activities. And third, and I think maybe also uh, has a big, big portion of it is the, um, the events video, right? So when currently we have a lot of videos being recorded, these events even now uh, with uh, the standard sensors are being transmitted into the cloud, right, for manual observation. And this requires a lot of manpower to determine if this was a, a meaningful, a meaningful event or not. And Using um, uh, the video, um, the AI capabilities uh, enables us to do the reviewing process for forensics, for driver coaching, much more efficient. We can save much, much more uh, um, resources where we have the meaningful events we know exactly. I'll, I'll give you one, one example. Think about the ability to uh, uh, detect stop sign. Right, so a stop sign is a visual information if you cross-reference with the car, let's say, uh, a speed, right? And each time that you see uh, stop signs, you identify stop signs, and you see that the, the, the speed of the driver has not been reduced uh, um, significantly, or you see a complete stop, it, this is, uh, has an effect, right, on the, uh, on the driver um, uh, scoring, how safe this driver is. This, this, visual information and being done uh, on the edge or even in the cloud for that matter gives a lot of insights that by that if you're only relying on the standard sensor right you see you don't see harsh braking you see like you know an average of 50 miles per hour then the driver has a, a perfect score but if he's not stopping at any traffic lights or any any junction then we have some kind of an issue so i see this and the combination of dms and adas uh, joined up together, I think provides a lot of value for the for the TSPs and of course to the uh, device manufacturers where now the, 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 the dash cams or the cameras that are trying to sell, the solutions that are trying to sell has additional, uh, uh, additional value and additional uh, advantages. Um, if, if I look uh, at Israel, uh, we talked a lot about the fleets and, um, and the um, capabilities aspect, the features for TSPs um, you know, with video telematic solutions, uh, TSPs can significantly increase their ARPU, uh, sometimes up to uh, 20 US dollars per month per vehicle. Uh, in some, some cases, I heard even more. Um, with video telematic solution, TSPs can differentiate themselves from the competition. I mean, if you look from the TSP's perspective, of course, it's, it's, it's quite natural for the fleet, but for the TSP, they can, be, uh, they can differentiate themselves from the comp competition, improve their brand value, brand recognition. You know, AI-powered, artificial intelligence-powered video telematics is, is perceived as highly innovative, um, aligned with technology trends in other fields of life, um, which, are, which are dominated by artificial intelligence and machine learning applications. So why not uh, harnessing that into our industry? Um, but, you know, the unavoidable truth is even simpler. They must, um, I mean, they must offer video telematics because of the value it brings to the fleets. So now there is an arm race in the market towards this uh, kind of solutions.
Okay, uh, look, I have, uh, I, I, I tend to agree with you, but I want to look at it, uh, it's a question from a little bit different perspective. Uh, it is quite clear that uh, video telematics is bringing new value to fleets. Okay, both of you mentioned it and described it very in a very, very nice and detailed way. It brings business opportunity uh, to TSPs. Okay, uh, as you said, Dudi increases ARPU and allows them to have differentiated features and uh, bring back innovation to uh, uh, to our industry. For device vendors, it might be the escape sequence uh, from the strategic threats that the high OEM involvement into the telematics industry will bring in the next five years, and that's something we need to take into account and think about. Uh, okay, I will move to my next question, uh, and uh, this one will relate to the market itself. I mean, fine, everybody is enthusiastic about new technology, and we are, all of the three of us, and the, probably many in the audience are uh, people who have their own industry experience, and we know that sometimes um, as technology is promising, not necessarily the adaptation rate uh, in the market will be as enthusiastic as the promise that such technology brings to the table. Now, uh, what will be your um, uh, prediction about the adoption uh, uh, of uh, video telematics in the marketplace? Will it be adopted by everybody? Who will be the adopters? What do you think are the conditions uh, to wide adoption of uh, these technologies. I'll appreciate your opinions, and maybe we'll start with Ohad this time uh, to be the first one to speak. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good question. So I can I can share with with my experience in the in the with our experience as Broadband Seventeen in the market, and we, as I mentioned before, we have been in the business of automotive applications for the last four years, uh, the aftermarket in the last two and a half years. And we've seen in the last year, um, uh, let's say, a, a big increase in, in the uh, you know, request from customers to get information and to supply projects and so forth. I think that, um, let's say, we see definitely in the, definitely in the U.S., we see a a very big trend. This is where we are uh, very, very active. Um, I think that um, the, the um, involvement of hardware, which is, and, and from, from Broadman 17 perspective, is we're a software company, we need, we need the hardware aligned to this. So we see two types, right? We see the companies who are uh, utilizing some cloud um, some cloud connectivity in order to do the analysis, the AI, the deep learning in the cloud. In terms of hardware, there is a, a real big challenge to run the, 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 the AI, at least from our front, on the, on the edge device. And this is what we are trying to uh, bring into, into the table. So I, see, I think that we see a lot of more device vendors which are uh, trying to embed these, uh, these capabilities into uh, their platforms. Once this will be uh, more common, right? And more device vendors, camera, what I call camera telematics providers, uh, will be able uh, uh, to provide these solutions, which are, from the technology perspective, the technology is definitely here, right? We're talking about um, uh, when working with the tier ones, definitely we see that these level, level one, level two solutions are already mass adopted, right? So. Reducing that into the, what the fleet, uh, the TSPs or fleet uh, managers need, it's, it's not a problem, right? It's, it's already here today. The only, the only uh, challenge is to be able to do this if you're doing this on the, on the edge device or doing it in the cloud in terms of connectivity, compute power, and, and, and so on. So I think that uh, we currently see uh, like the, it's not even early adapters, but we see the more uh, tech-savvy companies which have the ability to create the entire cycle, including the hardware and software where they want to design it on their own, right? I think that when we will see more and more uh, uh, camera telematics uh, providers providing these solutions into the market, then it will be easier for the, uh, for the TSPs, for these diff different companies to adopt that technology. And then the challenge that they will have 
is mainly onto, let's say, the integration into their platform, but they won't need to be uh, 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 designing a, a hardware and a software and the integration uh, uh, bundled up together, right? So that's, uh, that's my view. Uh, Dudi? Yeah, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a short story. Um, back in 2018, uh, when I designed the first uh, AI-powered um, solution, I believed and I told to my, uh, my team that we are probably have between one and a half to two years um, to win the market before such devices become widely available. And I mean, um, hybrid telematics and video uh, video solution. And um, it was in the days that uh, Litex and SmartRod, uh, Nauto and Netradyne, they sold their solutions for 500 to $1,000. And uh, the first two, this Litex and SmartRod, they actually dominated the, the, the traditional video telematics market. Not, not uh, artificial intelligence based by you know, traditional video recording. And the penetration rates was uh, were very low at around three percent in North America, less than one percent in uh, globally, and the cost was huge barrier. I mean, it was uh, really really um, not not widely adopted because of the cost. And we tried and we tried to uh, bring a platform which is fully rich, fully featured. Uh, in the range of between 170 to 300 dollars for the for the fully featured uh, solution. Apparently, back then I was too optimistic or too pessimistic, I must say. And it seems to take much longer for hardware vendors if you want to deliver high quality, feature rich, and competitively priced solution. And it also takes longer for the market to recognize the value and uh, to build the right business model be around this, uh, uh, these features. So yes, um, there is a wave of uh, TPs launching video telematic solutions. It started in North America in 2018, but uh, spreading faster to other territories, mainly Europe and later on also Latin America and, and Africa probably. probably. And, just to name a few which are in this arm race are Samsara and Keep Tracking and Trimble and Fleet Complete and Calamp and Zonar, you know, and those are just looking for different solutions in the market. And, uh, and of course, uh, and you know, and you know it from, from first end as being uh, uh, the owner of the aftermarket business in, uh, in eyesight. Um, so, as I mentioned before, uh, if you don't have video telematics, you are not uh, only uncompetitive uh, in the eyes of the new customers, um, but you also lose your existing uh, existing customers. And the, the interesting thing um, is that uh, in the in the near future, 85%, according to Frost and Telephone, 85% of the um, video telematics solutions are going to be around dual camera. Um, front-facing road camera and in-cab um, occupancy monitoring or driver, driver monitoring. So ADAS and DMS are going to be uh, powerful drivers uh, of this market. Um, I believe that eventually the game changer will be, as I said before, um, uh, you know, um, devices uh, which can uh, run uh, telematics alongside uh, diagnostics and computer vision capabilities on a single device. At the end of the road, you get artificial intelligence on commodity hardware, and this way you ensure a wide, wide penetration. That's that's my opinion. I'll tell you. Okay. I'll tell you, Israel. Uh, I just, uh, just, uh, just what, just uh, 60 seconds. I, we, we are. I think that when looking on the on the TSPs and video telematics, you know, there are the the, the, the companies who are now involved in this, and you can see the last acquisition of uh, Omni of Smart Drive by Omnitrack. There is a need for this, but I think the, the the rapid adaptation will be when it will be not the um, let's say sophisticated projects around it. When the small small to mid-sized video telematics providers, uh, you know, that are managing somewhere between five thousand to fifty thousand devices. When they will start to adopt it, right? When the, the lyrics of the world that are managing 800,000, there are not a lot of them, but 
when the, the smaller companies will do this as a, as a commodity, as, as just to mentioned, when the commodity hardware will be something very accessible and, uh, and eliminating the, the headaches of integrating when they can just buy it and put it in the car and just connect it to their back end, then there will be the rapid adaptation. And it will be, uh, uh, I, I'm guessing again, I don't want to be, you know, uh, uh, to, to mention time frame because it will always, it's recorded and it will always backtrack on you, right? But it, it will be definitely in the next couple of, let's say, years, it could be one, two, three, we'll see a rapid adaptation. This is my best educated guess. Okay. But this is, why, this is why you have to quote others. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dudi, let, let me, uh, uh, look, I, I was listening very well to you and some things came into my mind. Look, I think that there is a very, uh, Dudi, you gave uh, an example uh, from the legacy telematics talking about 2010, 2011 and the products that you've done there. Uh, there is a very big, big difference between a video telematics, which is highly AI supported, uh, than the telematics uh, uh, that uh, we did uh, something like 10 years ago. Uh, the big difference is what I'm calling uh, uh, performance quality. I mean, quality was always an issue in telematics because you need to have robust products that operate under very harsh conditions and do not break and really are doing what they do. But the functionality was a challenge, let's say a moderate channel, not a very, very high level challenge. Now, to make a, a satisfying level of performance in driver monitoring or in ADA side, you need really to be an AI professional. Not everybody can do it. Everybody can do something, but not everybody can do such a high quality thing, especially on the flat hemisphere when you have the issue of false alarms to handle. And I think that the market will grow based on the quality of those players, but there are going to be some kind of a Darwinist process. I mean, there will be those guys that are capable to deliver high quality, and I'm counting EyeSight as part of them, and I'm counting Broadman 17, which I know very well as part of it, because I know the performance, and a large part of the market is not going to get into this level, so they will be out. And we need to take it into account. So price change is going to be much more moderate. And here there is another business attitude, uh, uh, opportunity uh, than what we have seen in the past. This is my opinion. Let's, uh, before concluding, uh, uh, let's uh, see a few questions that we have on uh, the chat and everybody can see it. So um, uh, questions that relates to business, uh, I was approached maybe uh, others as well. Uh, what I suggest is that uh, we cannot address it immediately here. So uh, Ohad, Dudi, and I will uh, simply uh, type on the channel our mail address, and everybody who wants to communicate with us is very welcome. Uh, two questions that I see here. First of all, Andrew is asking about the expected uh, rate of accidents. And uh, uh, Dudi, you addressed it before. Maybe you will address it a little bit. Uh, uh, to the audience. Um, yeah, well, I recently read uh, a research uh, published by uh, by Frost and Sullivan uh, claiming that um, um, road-facing cameras can uh, reduce uh, up to 44, it's something between 42 to 44 different uh, cases, different type of events, uh, but in general up to 45% uh, less injuries and fatalities. If you translate it into uh, money, uh, it's a lot of money, uh, in, in claims and um, taking into account not only the, the cost of fatalities, but also again, times that uh, claims are uh, submitted, although you, it's, not, it's not your fault. So exoneration, it's very, very important, can cost a lot of money. So in terms of, uh, of uh, less accidents, I know this number, 45%, um, well, didn't measure it myself. Uh, Ohad, anything to add? Yeah, I think, again, I think the numbers is, is like accuracy for, uh, for AI depends on how you measure it, right? You can, put a, you can put a number, you can put a number. I think it's, it's undisputable that um, the, the ability, and you know, I'll take this maybe from the angle of the, 
the ADAS features for the for the integrated, right? It's that we we definitely see and we can think about you know uh, when we are uh, utilizing or driving, right? And the the ADAS feature in the car alerts us. So it's it's undisputable that it it helps if it's 45, 55. It really depends on the business case, right? If we're looking at, let's say, oil and gas or something like that, where the damage uh, uh, for any any accident could be millions or something like that. So it's, it's, I think it's it's really depending. I think there is no doubt that it, it's helping. I think that this is where this is where the future is, and the combination of the incubating for distraction and even a, a combined together with the front facing for not just for uh, uh, mitigating the, uh, the, the immediate accident, even as a, as a training, right, as a training program and to be able to rate better the driver and then fire the ones which are not good and, and, and save a lot of money for the organization, right? So this is, this is another way of looking at things. So I, I really believe in that. Uh, good. Uh, all those are a lot of numbers and people can relate to the uh, NHTSA, to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association research that are talking about a 20% plus a reduction in accident rate. Numbers are uh, varied, but all of them are under the agreement that we are talking about the percentage which is over 20%. Uh, so uh, I would guess that this is going to have a major influence on those fleets who will use it. Okay. Okay, guys. First of all, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Judy. Thank you, Ohad. Okay, uh, thank and you. I want to thank the uh, organizers of the conference who gave us quite a nice platform. Uh, Constantinos, uh, please contact me uh, or Ohad in mail to uh, to clear uh, your questions on the business level. And uh, I thank everybody that uh, joined us today. And I hope that uh, we gave you an interesting and satisfying session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Keep saying.